So in a scenario kind of environment here, what we're talking about is sniffing the network at big money bank and then analyzing the stuff that we capture and looking for this third bullet is absolutely critical. Combining what we've analyzed, what we capture with our sniff, combining that with our nefarious network map, our footprinting, whatever we got as far as pre-information, if we're doing a white box or gray box penetration test, all of that stuff comes together. So sniffing in and of itself will almost never give you enough data to penetrate or continue a hack, but it will give you information that you can plug now into your nefarious network map in your catalog. And I'm going to show you how that works now. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you a couple of different elements to network sniffing. First of all, how to actually do a network sniff in a little bit more of a secretive and ethical hacking way, and also how to take a peek at a capture to analyze it for a critical piece of data. First off, I get a lot of questions around how do I make sure that no one knows that I am me? When I'm sniffing, maybe there's some detection technique. It's possible to detect some types of passive sniffing, even if they're passive. So what I typically do is I actually change the MAC address that I'm assigned on this host. That way, because it's very easy to spoof an IP address, but it's a little bit harder to change a MAC. And I get questions about that. Oftentimes, Windows 7, the driver itself, and other versions of Windows certainly, but Windows 7, the driver itself has the capability to change the MAC address. But right now, and in most hacking scenarios, I'm actually running VMware, running this operating system within VMware. And in VMware, it's amazingly simple to change the MAC address. In fact, all I do is come over here, to the advanced button under networking and I can change the MAC address to anything I want uh, whether it's a different manufacturer or similar manufacturer pro tip for you is to look for who they are using the target is using as a manufacturer and use a MAC within that same first six octet prefix or first three octet prefix so for example if the target is using a lot of Cisco hardware ensure that the prefix for the MAC address is a Cisco prefix. If they're using a lot of Intel gear, ensure that you mir mimic that by using the same prefix and then a unique suffix. That will help avoid detection by kind of looking like you belong there, kind of blending into the background. Using a MAC address prefix that doesn't belong there is certainly going to be a potential for raising flags. So once you've changed the MAC address, all you do in Wireshark to start capturing is click the interface button and it's going to start a capture. And unfortunately, the captures can be really, really slow. They can be really, really fast. It just depends on where you are, what kind of traffic you're seeing, whether you're conducting an active attack or not. So for sake of simplicity and for speeding up the video, I've actually gone ahead and gotten a pre-configured capture here that I'd like to bring up and show you exactly the cool information that you can get in a pre-configured cap or in a capture. So this example, actually this example is downloadable from the Wireshark website and it's exa an example of a number of different things going on on a network. There's a lot of traffic, lots and lots of traffic going on here. What we're most interested in is completing our nefarious network map, finding out some interesting information about what's going on on the network and starting to identify the target, starting to narrow down the targets that we're looking for. And for example, right here, we've got this host called Lucy, and this host is making a host announcement saying, hey, I'm out here, anybody wanna talk to me, that's great. You can see from UDP source port 138, it is a Windows client and it's making this browser announcement, fantastic. We know it's a Windows client, and if we know that the environment has domain controllers or has a Windows domain, probably this client at some point is going to talk to a domain controller. So I actually want to set it up such that I can watch domain controller traffic and identify the domain controller, who it is, because perhaps I wasn't able to map that in my nefarious network map yet. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to figure out the domain controller based on seeing Lucy the host Lucy come up on the network. I'm going to bring up the filter window 
and I'm going to actually tell it to find me all packets where the IP address equals Lucy's. And you can see Lucy's address right here. If I move this window out of the way, 192.168.10.129 in the source from Lucy. So all IP address equal 192.168.10.129. And that's what I'm going to see when I apply this filter. So I see Lucy's traffic. I see what Lucy is doing. She's actually resolving some DNS queries here in these frames. Then she's actually looking around for an LDAP server. Well, if she's looking for an LDAP server in a Windows environment, you probably already know that she's looking for a domain controller. That's great. We want her to find a domain controller because we want her to tell us which systems are the domain controllers. And then we've got this success response here, and she's also asking for network time. And we know that in Windows, the only systems that she's going to ask for network time are going to be Windows domain controllers. So we actually know from all of this traffic that this target here, 192.168.10.101, is almost certainly a domain controller because she's talking LDAP to it and she's also talking NDP or NTP rather to it. So we know that we can start then sniffing traffic that goes to and from 10.101 and we're going to find a domain controller or we can mount a denial of service attack against 10.101 because we know it's a domain controller and attacking that might be beneficial to kicking people off the network.